we were lucky enough, we got to the Mishnah, like I said, on 48A1. We got to the Mishnah, the top Mishnah on 48A1, that begins with the word Ha-Halel. So let's begin. Ha-Halel, the obligation to do the full Halel, that means Halel Gomor, the Simcha, meaning the Shalmei Simcha, the carbon Simcha, meaning to have meat on Yontif, Shmoina is a rule for all eight days. Keitza. What is this coming to teach us? Melamed Shechayiv Adam, that a person is mechuyiv, is obligated. Bahalel, the simcha, uvikvoid, yontav, achim, shalchag. That a person is mechuyiv to say halal as in the full halal and to rejoice, to have meat at his table. And to honor the final day of Yontif, i.e. Shmini Atzeres, Kishar Yemoy Sachad. Just like all the other days of the Yontif, just like the all of Sukkis, there's a chiyuv to have joy. And joy comes with saying Hallel and having shechting and slaughtering a Shalmei Tzibor, a Shalmei, a Shalmei Simcha, a Shlomim of joy and having meat at your table. So too for Shmini Atzeres. And yes, in in the diaspora, Jerry, Jeffrey, Jeff, right? You would have Simchas Torah because Simchas Torah is really a carbon copy of, of Shmini Atzeres. So spray to Gemara Minohani Mili. How do I actually know this? That that there's a rule of, of, of rejoicing, of Simcha on the last day, not just on Sukkot, but also on Shmini Atzeres. The Tanu Rabbanon, because Rabbanon say, Yisa Ach Sameach. The Pasuk says, Seven days you shall celebrate with Hashem, and you shall be but joy, joyous. Yisa Ach Sameach. The Rabbis, the word Ach, be nothing but joyful. The Rabbis, Lele Yontiv Achre, to teach us that the final night of Yontiv, I Yishmini Atzeres, should be as full of joy as the first seven days. Says Gemari, oh, yeah, yeah, maybe it's only coming to tell us that the first night of the festival, i.e. the first night of Sukkot, you should have extra, you should lay it on thick with the Simcha. Zabdi Gemara, good morning, Daddy. Kishuhu Oimer, Ach Cholak. The word Ach, which could be described as you shall be nothing but the nothing is to tell us that no, the first day of Sukkot has simcha like the entire Sukkot, nothing extra. The flip side is to tell us that at the end you extend it, Daddy. There is no chalim Um What he called that you extend the simcha into Shmini Atzeres. We're now on forty-eight A two. Forty-eight A two. Says the Gemara, Umaro Yisila Rabbi Slele Yom Tefah So what tells you that the Ach, the nothing but, comes to include the last night of the holiday, i.e. Shmini Atzeres night, Ula Oitzi Lele Yom Tevarishin, and to exclude the first night of Yom from having extra joy, says the Gemara, Marbani Lele Yom Tefah I include the last night of Yontiv, Shiyesh Simcha Lefanov, which has a lot of joy that came before it, i.e. the full seven days of Sukkot, in which there was a specific chiyuv, a specific obligation to be full of joy, as we're going to see. Maitzani Lelia Yontiv Rishin, and I exclude the first night of Yontiv, the first night of Sukkot, Shein Simcha Lefanov, which has no days of Simcha prior to it, because those are just simply Weekday days between Yom Kippur and Sukkot. Very good. So now the mate goes further. Sukkot Shiva Ketzat. The obligation to sit in the Sukkot for seven days. What's going on? Meaning, how do you end it? How do you, when you get to the end of the seventh day, how do you end it? Now, why do we make a big deal about this? Because we want to make it very clear that sitting in the Sukkot is an obligation of how many days? Seven days. We don't want it to even look like any issue of Baal Toysif. Baal Toysif means adding, it's an Isser to add. 
Do not add to God's commandments. Do not subtract from God's commandments. The example will be that on our talis, right, which is a tzitzis, we have four corners. Don't make a fifth corner. Okay? Don't fast two days of Yom Kippur. Right? Don't go overboard. Or just the opposite. Don't shrink things down. Okay? So, essentially, you, that, that you can improve on, on God's best. And, and, and as you say, you cannot improve on a Rembrandt. Right? You, if you can't improve, if you, you can't improve on perfection, when you try to improve perfection, it becomes imperfect. Good morning, Mordechai. So, here we go. So, that's the Gemara over here. So, the Gemara says, Sukkot Shibiketza. How do I show that Sukkot is coming to an end? I'm clearly the mark, the, 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 making, you know, making a mark, right? That here ends Sukkot. That even though we're going to sit in the sukkah on Shmini Atzeres because of those of us who are in the diaspora. So we're not sure if Shmini Atzeres is really Shmini Atzeres or really the last day of sukkah. If the second day of sukkah is the first day, then Shmini Atzeres is really the last day of sukkah. Nonetheless, we know we don't make a bracha, but we're also going to go ahead. We have to make some sort of break in the action, says the Gemara, says the Mishnah. When one finishes eating his last meal on the seventh day on the Shana Rabbo, he should not take down the sukkah. Number one, because the mitzvah of sukkah is until the last moment, the last moment of the seventh day. So just because you finish eating by four o'clock in the afternoon, theoretically the mitzvah of sukkah still exists. In the world until Shmini Atzeris arrives. And when Shmini Atzeris arrives, obviously you can't take it down because it's Yelkin, right? As we're going to see. Hold that thought. Number two, if you go, if for those of us who are in Chutz Lawrence in the diaspora, we sort of have to sneak into the sukkah on the eighth day for, you know, because of the uncertainty. So, but what do you do to make the demarcation then that sukkah has ended? And we're not being over on Baal Toysif on adding an extra day to Sukkot. However, you can take down your utensils from Mincha time. That means Mincha Kitano. As you know, there's a Mincha Gedoyla and a Mincha Kitano. Mincha Gedoyla starts six and a half hours into the day. Mincha Kitana starts nine and a half hours into the day, otherwise known as two and a half hours before Seishatecha, before Shkia. Ulamala, right? Mibnei Kovid Yontev Akhren Shachag, in order for the honor of the Yontev, final Yontev of the, of the Yontev, i.e., that of, of Shmini Atzeris, where in Eretz Yisrael, you would begin to prepare the table in your house for the eating of the meal of Shmini Atzeres. Now, number one, I want to point out to everybody in the Mishnah, go back. What do you do? You take down the kalim from Mincha in the afternoon and onwards. What does this mean? You take down the kalim. Not that you bring in the kalim. You take down. So on a simple language, it's because most of the time they put their sukkahs on the roof. So they literally brought down their sukkahs, their, their utensils from the roof into their apartments. But on a more chasidish way, you can say they're going down spiritually because you're leaving the sukkah, which is, which is the anane akavah, the clouds of glory, and you're going back into your home. So you're leaving the, the, the Sukkot Arai of Olam Haba, and you're going back to the, to your house, which is the Deiris Kaba of Olam Hazer. So you can you say that that's the loss of the you're going down right on a, on a more esoteric way of looking at the thing. So says the Gemara, okay, 
the whole purpose over here is so that we should not like to have Baal Toysef, like we're adding on to the Torah's mitzvahs of an extra day. So by removing the utensils the, that he used in the sukkah all week long, he's showing that we're sort of leaving the sukkah without actually taking down the sukkah. You're sort of showing that's your demarcation. So there's a Gemara. Left in Israel, so we're constantly bringing them in. We're coming, constantly bringing them in and out, as we're going to see. Hold that good question. All that thought, but let's come back to that in a minute. Ain't, but first, there's a more basic question. Mar says, Ain't loy kalim loy rid mal. What happens if a guy didn't have any, any, any kalim in the sukkah to bring down? How does it demarcate that sukkah is over? Says the Gemara, Ain't loy kalim, he had no utensils. Eloki is tamish, but my is tamashish. Then others say, How did he eat all the time? What, he ate with his hands? Right? Jews don't eat with their hands. Right? It doesn't matter. You have to get rid of the big one. <laughs> no, 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 no good. The one doesn't even carry with the big Ella. In other words, the Tanoim and Amaroim, when they ate pizza, they ate it with a fork and a knife. They didn't eat it the New York stuff. Ella. Silver, 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 of course. That's, except, Daddy, that's all very nice. Ella. If one has no place to bring the Kalim down, that, that means that, that doesn't make sense either. He's homeless. You should know the answer. You, the one who showed us the Tysus the other day, Tysus said the other day, he's bringing down to his house. He doesn't have a house. In fact, the Mepharshim explained that he has to sit in the Sukkah on Shmini Atzeres, because he has no house to which to return to. He's homeless. Your Tysus that you showed us. Unbelievable. Okay, that's what I said. That Tysus explains this Gemara. Right? Listen to this. So here's the thing. Not only does he have no place to which to bring down his Kalim, to demark, but in fact, he's going to be living further in the Sukkah. So what does he do? How does he show? It's a, it's a very sad situation, but he still has to show a demarcation. Says the Gemara, Rabbi Barashi, Barashi Oma, Poisach Po Abo. He makes a four tepak opening in the Schach, disqualifying the Sukkah. Okay, at least that part of the Sukkah. Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi Yoyme, Madlik Boris in fact, all he does is light candles in the sukkah. Because we learned earlier that in a small sukkah, the smallest sukkah, which is seven tfachim, seven handbreadths by seven handbreadths, if you remember, we're not allowed to light lamps in there. Why? Because it fills up the sukkah with smoke and it's a fire hazard. So we didn't light lamps. And it says the Gemara will light pleaky. In fact, we're not arguing. Right? Hold on. The statement of Rabbi Yeshua Malevi is by us who live in Babel. Halahu, those are the days of Chia that says, take, oh, you're a tzaddik. Thank you very much. Ethan at tzaddik from Laksa Bebzo that just donated the missing color of Yisrael milk. Thank you. Thank you. I was getting to that. And now we are going to take, now everybody's going to say, we're taking a two minute break. <laughs> to get a <laughs> okay, <laughs> you you could be in a different country and get a delivery of chalav yisrael milk. Exactly right. Okay, do me a favor, can you pour me a cup as well? I don't know how to do that. <laughs> don't fight over it. Don't fight over it. <laughs> so, uh, Jerry, the coffee takes the ain't of the Oh, wow. Beautiful. Okay. Second, I will be right there. Oh, but look at this coffee. Oh, oh, oh wow. That's, yeah, the, yeah. That's, the, that's the first milk delivery I've seen since I was a little kid. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like the old glass. Yes, yeah. I can't remember this. Wow. Thank you.
Jeff, you can do a daf, you daf yomi and order food at the same time. I'm telling you, yeah, it's unbelievable. It's <laughs> unbelievable. All from Warwick, New York. Amazing. All from Warwick, New York. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Thank you, Jerry, and thank you. Yeah, thank you. Here we go. So the Gemara says like this. So here we go. So what do we? And he says no argument. This is by us with regard to the lamp in in Bavel, and this is you guys removing in the schach and eretz yisrael. What's pshat? Pshat is like this. In Bavel, you have to remember you're still eating in the sukkah on shmini at seres because of. The suffix because of the uncertainty, which means that you cannot go ahead and breach the schach by four tvach, by four by what it called by four tvachim. Because if you breach the schach by four tvachim, what did you just do? You made the sukkah invalid, and then you can't sit in the sukkah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. So it means like this. So first of all, we go like this. So in Bovel, they couldn't come on to the four. The four, the four tefach removal of the schach because I needed the sukkah. Yes, so conditionally, you know, to sneak in, right of thing. But in Eretz Yisrael, right? But in Eretz Yisrael, of course, I could do the easy one. Just move the schach, right? Take off the schach, and boom, I'm all good to go. The answer with is they brought the lamp. They brought the lamp on the Hashanah right? And left it in there. Remember, it's Hashanah So, and by doing that, you made the sukkah. Unlivable because there was smoke in there. Of course, by the by the night time you take it away because you got to use it. But at least you showed a demarcation. Says the Gemara that 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 trick of using the lamp in Bavel because I still needed the sukkah, but I got it to be. I had to show a demarcation at the end of the seventh day that sukkah is ending. That only works on a seven by seven, seven hand breath by seven hand breath. But a large sukkah, how am I, what am I going to say? Where certainly you can light candles. In fact, many have the tradition to light the candles in the sukkah. Okay, and then they bring it in. And then you bring it in because of the fire has it, but still you do it. How does one show in Bovel that you have a demarcation between sukkahs and shmini atzeres? That's the Gemara. Now remember what you said over there, Mordechai. The mile bo ma'one ma'ichu. One demonstrates on Sukkot has passed by bringing in, not bringing out, by bringing in messy, dead, dirty dishes back into the Sukkot. The Oma Rabba ma'one michlo bar mital talta. Eating utensils, utensils that you ate on, should be taken out. Out, out of the sukkah after use. Drinking cups that could remain inside the sukkah, but it is not covered at sukkah to go ahead and leave dirty dishes in the sukkah. That's your answer. So they did take dishes back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> By bringing it back, deliberately dirty dishes, you're showing, oh, we're finished, we're finished. It's not sukkah anymore. Very good. Now we're coming up to this. Oh. Uh, That's all you have to do. Essentially, what you would be doing is mut, it, when you get to the end of a Shanarabo, right? So today, what we do, if you remember, we at the end, it is a Tfilo, he wrote sign. That you can say at the end of the Shanarabo. You say goodbye. Now, some people do it on a Shanarabo, right? But if you want, you could do it. And some people do it on, on Shmini Atzeris. But if you want, you could do it on a Shanarabo. That's your break. I'm saying goodbye, right? Just because I said goodbye doesn't mean that tomorrow I'm not going to sit in the sukkah. You know, I happen to find myself in the sukkah. We'll get, you know, to be a guy in the mitzvah. But then, so today we don't go too crazy about this because we're living in a different world and, a different, and because we know that. We're only doing it zeicha to the uncertainty because today we don't have an uncertainty because of the cloud thing. So now, all year long, when you brought the carbon atomic, the morning carbon and the afternoon carbon, it is brought together with, it is brought together with wine, known as 
misuch hayayin, the pouring of the wine. On sukkis, something was added, misuch hamayim, the water gathering. So the Gemara in the Mishnah says, Nisuch HaMayim Ketzad, how is the water libation done? Now before we begin, I'm going to say a word that I said before. That, that I heard from the Semi Rov, who said it over from the Rav Tetzirah, from the Zara Kodesh. Why do we do Nisuch HaMayim? So here's the answer. On Rosh Hashanah, we, you know, we all go out and we do Tashla. What do we do? We throw our Averis out into the sea. Tashla the Mitzula Yom. Call Chataisam. Throw on to the sea all of your Averis. Right? Because we're throwing away theoretically or the sea, let it go out the sea. Now comes your Kippur, and we go ahead and we make Chuba. We make Chuba Meahava, Chuba out of love. What happens when you repent out of love? All your Averis become Zuchiyais. All your, all your sins become virtuous, virtuous, rewardable uh, mitzvahs. Now, the reason for that is, by the way, is because the only reason why you did a repentance out of love is because you did the Averis, because you did the sins. If you hadn't done the sins, you would never have done a repentance out of love. So it turns out that the sins were the catalyst to make a repentance out of love. So therefore, they really were a catalyst to be mitzvahs. So they become suchias. So they become... And you get a lot of mitzvahs. Exactly. But says is that a kaidish? But now that the mitzvah is, wait a minute, I don't have those averis anymore. I threw them out into the sea, so now I want I want them back. So now on Sukkot we do nisuch hamayim, we bring back the water, and that's it. I take back my averis with that out of here. That's the zera kaidish. And since we zimmerman, since we zimmermans happen to be from the Alta Haim, the season of the Rav as the story goes. My grandfather's name was Michal Zimmerman, and his great great grandfather was famously known as Michal Namish. Michal from the city of Namish. They were Kalavil Chasidim. Okay, so when the Kalavil was Nifta, the Kalavil was Nifta, they went looking for a new Rebbe. Okay, so when they got, they came, when they finally got to Rupshitz, the Lancet, where the Rupshitz was, they heard one Chas pouring out his heart and he did disobey, disobey, disobey. So they heard the Rupshitz to say to them, Oi! What did the, the rabbi Yisrael, what did the master of the world do to have a son like you? The other is trying to tell him you're his son. You know, you got you to make your father happy. Right? They really love that, that, that thing. You know, look at it that way. That no matter what, you're a son. And you got to So lots of Shabbos, as the story goes, grandfathers went over to the Rav So it said that they're masking, they're willing to be his chassidim. But only until Tchir Samesim happens. Until the resurrection of the dead happens and the caliber gets back up. When the caliber gets back up, they got to go back to Kalibur, right? They can't stay with Rupshitz. Okay, so the goes, the Rupshitz was masked. The Rupshitz said, okay, I agree. He said, Daddy, it's not just the story, it's incident ever. That's it. So take it as it were. Otherwise, why do we do Nisa Chabai? You have another reason for the Nisa Chabai? Aha. How do you do? How do you do the wine libations? So long as it's Mechazek and it's high. You use it for Torah. Oh, well that's good. so that wait. Hold that thought because we're going to get to that. I don't know if we're going to get to it today, but we're going to get to that exactly. Nisachamayim keitzad saluch and shulzav mezeg is mishkalay shulukin high and malim and shuluach. A person from the, from the groups of the base of from the administrators of the base of Megdus would fill a golden flask with the capacity of three lugans, because the Tanakama holds that Nisu, just like Nisu Chayayin is three lugan, so too, which is between 35 and 79 ounces, um, so too Nisu Chayayin, the, 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 the water gathering, the water libation is also three lugan. He took it from the Shiluach. The Shiluach was like a creek, I guess is the best way, on the, underneath the base of Mingus, from the board over there. A water source underneath the base of Mingus. And they discovered it now. In the end of it. Correct. You can walk it now, actually. He gave the Sharamayim. When they returned from the Shiluach to the base of Mingus, they reached the water gate. The water gate was called the water gate because you brought the water through that gate. 
It also was the one that was closest to the Mizbeach. It was on the south side. It was closest to the to the to the altar. And it was also the closest to the city of David as we know it today. Okay. In Shigal Shamayim, Tiku Viriu Vitiku, they blew the Shaifa, they uh Tikia, Teruah and a Tikia. All of the Kebes who funnel is smiley. The Kayin chosen to carry the water went up the ramp, right? The ramp, the big ramp of the altar, and turned to his left. Everybody heard that? Turn to his left. Because everything you turn to your right. Here he went left. Shnei Sephalim Shekesef Ayesham. There were, well, the Gemara is going to discuss it. There were two silver bowls on the southwest corner of the base of the Mizbeach, of the altar. Rabbi Yehuda, I met, Shall see it, how you that the bowls were actually made out of plaster. Okay, we're on now on 48 A4. But the surfaces became darkened from the wine that was used there every day to pour the wine libations to give them a silver like appearance. The problem with that is only one of those bowls was used for wine, one of those other bowls was for water, and water does not discolor like the Gemara talk about. Okay, Umenu Kabin. Now the bowls had spouts that were perforated. The spouts were downwards. Okay, as we're going to see, that were perforated. We're on 48B1. Memches Summit Base. Kimin Shnei Chotomin Dakin. Resembling two thin nostrils, two small holes. Echen Mu'ubav Echadak. One of the holes was thick. And one of them holds us thinner. You know the saying, well, the blood, is, blood is thicker than water? We're now going to discover where that saying was saying from. Because the real saying is, wine is thicker than water. When you flood, take two wine and you pour it at the exact same time as water, which one flows faster? Water. So therefore, one hole was thicker. And one hole was thinner in order to get them today in order that they both pour out, they drain out at the same time. Because you know why, Daddy? It looked nicer. It looked, it's all look, it's all looks. It's not mock. It's not mock. Yeah. Water represents. Right. We can think about what. Yain represent yain. 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 This week's Parsha. This week's Parsha is the Taichacha. The great Taich of 80 Psuk and Rak, the emanations of 80 Psuk, the terrible Taich of And it will be for you a sign and a miracle to your children after you. Why did this, why all these terrible things coming to you? Tachas, because Asher lo yabadita, Hashem elekecho, because you did not serve Hashem, your God. Besimcha with joy, with besimcha with joy, and with gladness of heart, may Roy's call when you add everything. The whole time comes not because you didn't serve Hashem. You did serve Hashem. You didn't serve him with joy and with a full heart, with a glad heart. You don't serve God with joy, then you're just a machine. You're back in Mitzrayim. You're back in Egypt. Such slave gods, I don't need that. I don't need machines. I don't need chafetzim. I need gavros who say, Ana Abdu for the Kutchabrihu. I am a servant of God. People who come say, I will serve God with joy and command. Yayin represents joy. Yayin misamchim and the Labab energy. Yayin brings joy to the heart of man. Mayim ain't Mayim el Toiro. Water represents Toiro. How do you got to do the Toiro? With joy. Daddy. What do you do on Sukkis? You bring the two of them together. You bring the two of them together. Very good, Mordecai. Very good. 
And that's very important to note when you learn this discussion. And it's Kedai to say this at your Shabbos table. It does not say that the whole Teich was coming because we didn't serve God. Read the Pasuk. It says you didn't serve God with joy and gladness of heart. If you take the joy and the gladness of heart out, Jeff has talked about this a lot. That unfortunately, in the reform movements and all that, they've essentially taken the guts out of Yiddishkeit, out of Judaism. They've taken the why out of it. The purpose, they've taken the joy and the gladness of heart. When you make Judaism a chore, instead of an act of glory, a glad of joy, what do you have left? You can't, you can't pass it on. You can't, certainly not in a modern world, you're not going to be able to pass it on. The that's places. why that's why we as Orthodox need to get involved in every different area of uh, federations and whatnot. And I will tell you, we have made an impact. I know Shelly and I have made an impact with our federation in Southern Jersey. That anything that happens has to be kosher under a national supervision. Nothing on the Sabbath, et cetera, et cetera. Same thing with JNF, Jewish National Fund at one point was 3% Orthodox. Today, we're already 18% Orthodox. Then a convention of over 350 people by Kabbalah Shabbos. Okay? That's exact. I'll, I'll give another example. When I used to work for Machon Weizmann, when I worked for the Weizmann Institute of Science, the American Committee for the Weizmann Institute of Science as their budget director, I, I was the only second yarmulke in the place. And they used to have, uh, you know, retreats or whatever it is. They were not kosher. I didn't say a word. But the second year I was there, they said, no, we can't do that. We're a Jewish organization. There can't be Jews that are working for us that cannot eat at our, at our uh, retreats. And from that point on to this day, from that point on to this day, every retreat has kosher food. But by not making a bit, by being joyful about it, it made it easy for them to make such a decision because that is the underlying insight. And it's exactly what you said. The Yayin and the Mayim coming together because if they're two separate things, joy without Torah and Torah without joy, joy without Torah is empty, is, is a joyfulness that's empty. Torah without joy is cold, is mechanical. Bring them together, and it's a lie. And of course, that's what it is. It's a living, breathing thing. And that's what it requires. Anyways, let's keep but going. Remember, remember about Yayin. Remember there's something, there's a, a, a there's Koso, Kaso, and Kiso. Okay? So. Oh, <laughs> we're getting to it. We're getting to it. Patience. Patience. Very good. As what Jerry just pointed out, that Yayin has a few things. They're sanctifying. It's also intoxication, right? Too much of a thing is no good. The Gemara, believe it or not, is getting is heading in that direction, Jerry. Very good. <laughs> Very good. As usual, Jerry's way ahead of the game. So, Kedei Shem Kolem Bevas Achas. Marvi Shomayim Mizrach Shoyayin. The bowl on the west was for water. The bowl on the east was for wine. The bowl of wine was placed closer to the Kahanam approaching from the ramp because the wine libation was done every day, right? And we have a rule. Tadir v'she'enay tadir, tadir kaidim, which means something that happens frequently and something that happens infrequently, the thing that happens frequently comes first, okay? So therefore they situated the bowl for the wine closer to where that's the first bowl that the kayin came to. Yeah, it doesn't make this up at all year long. But remember, first all year long, he didn't have to do it. That's what we we're saying. To be you're right, on Sukkot he did, but the rest of the year was just the wine. Okay, so now, now what happens? Eroy Shomayim with Toyik Shoyayim. If one poured the flask of water into the bowl that was set aside for wine, or poured the wine into the bowl set aside for water. Yotza, it's okay, the world's not falling apart. 
And now we know how both walls can get discolored. Because since you could make a mistake, the iron can be poured even into the water bowl and that can get discolored. Rabbi Yehuda, a, Rabbi Yehuda says you don't need three lugan. You only for yayin, only for wine, my patients, you need three lugan. For water, you only need one look. The client poured the water using a one log flask all eight days. So Rabbi Yehuda is arguing on two things. He says, I only need one look. And number two, and number two, it's all, it's even on Shemini, it says, not just Shukas. We're going to end at five, two, because I didn't have it yet, so I got it done with the next minute. Okay, so, um, and to the porter, they would say, raise your hand while you're pouring. That is because the Tzidoiki, the Tzidoiki, the Sadducees, who did not believe in what the rabbinical said, since the wine, the water libations are not mentioned directly in the Torah, they didn't believe in it. So guess what? Shapam Echad, Nisach Echad Agabe Raglov. One time a Kayan poured the water onto his feet because he didn't believe in this whole pouring of the water. And the people pelted him with their Esrigs. They all took their Esrigs and they threw it at him. And it turns out that people inside didn't just throw Esrig, they also threw rocks. But the Gemara, the, the Mishnah doesn't want to mention that. But you're going to see it comes up. It's a historical reality. It's a sad situation. Right. And we're going to get to it more in the Gemara. That's why I don't want to get into it. Just as the water libations were performed on a weekday, it needed to be done on Shabbos. But, except that he would draw the water from the Shiluach, from the creek, on, on the, not on the, what he called, he would do it Erev of Shabbos, and he would do it in a keli that was not consecrated, that was not made holy. The Gemara is going to say, why? Why not? What's the difference? Since you're going to use it for holy, why can't I already collect it in a holy keli, in a holy vessel? The Gemara is going to talk about it. Right? And he would put it into a chamber for the next day. Nishbach nisgalsa, if the water spilled or became uncovered, which meant that the water could not be used for Nisach HaMayim, which the Gemara will discuss, how you in Akiar, he would fill up a golden flask, a holy golden flask from the Kiar, which was the watering, which was the sink in which the Kahanim would wash their hands and feet within inside the temple. It was a whole mechanized thing that went down and up with a pulley system. We're on 48 B2. Okay, trying to make a work a day down onto today's top. For uncovered wine and water are unfit to be used on the Mizbech, on the altar. And the Gemara obviously has to explain it. So let's get to it. How do you know that you blow the cypher or the trumpets when you brought the Nisa Chamayim, when you did the water libations? And you shall draw water with rejoicing. Rejoicing is what he calls goes together with blowing the shaita. Hadi Tremineg. There are two, there were two heretics. Echad Khadshime Sosai, the Khadshime Simcha. One's name was Sasai and the other name was Simcha. As in Sasa the Simcha Khasa the Gala. Omalay Sasai was Simcha. Ana Adipa Minach. These reform guys, you know, they love to play with the psukim. You know, they, they do that today even as well. They take the psukim, they come up with these, you know, out of left field uh, social uh, agenda uh, things that you have to do. So here they were doing the same thing. I'm better than you. It says, Sosai before Simcha. Sosai the Simcha. I'm better than you. Right? In, in the Megillah, it says, joy and uh, gladness and joy to the Jews. One day, Hashem, the heavens will strip you of your status and make you simply a scout. To scout out what's coming, as it written, 
because Simcha will go out when the Shiach will come. Amalei Simcha l'sosai, yachad yoyma shavku malach b'maya. One day the heavens will strip you of your status and will have you draw water. Because it says, shavta mayim b'sosai, and we will draw water with sosai. Fine. Amalei ahu mina b'shmei sosai l'rebi abuwa. There was a certain min, a heretic, by the name of Sasan, who said to Rebbe Vu, Asidim dismaluli mayim lamala da osid exib shapta mayim besasan. You, the Jewish nation, are, are designed, uh, uh, the, your future is to draw water for me in the world to come. Because it says, shapta mayim besasan, and you will draw water with Sasan. Amale, so Rebbe Vu said, I have exib lis Sasan. For Sasan, Kitty Abrek. Hashta, the Xiv, this Sasan, we will draw water, you shall draw water with Sasan, Mishkache, Ahugabe, Mishabele, Guta, Malade, Maya. That means the skin of that person, you, will be used for the canteen with which we will set the water. Fine. Okay. Says the Mr. Further, we've got another three minutes. Well, actually, right until we with another three minutes, all of the canvas who follow the smile, if he went up on the ramp and turned left, okay, you can see diagram A on the okay on 48 B3. Normally, every time you go up the ramp, you turn right, you turn right, and you go around the altar and come down the ramp on the left. Look at diagram A. Except for one who comes up with these three things. Who would go up on the left and then after doing the Abayda, the task, would turn back and come back down on the left. Like we just discussed. Right? We discussed that too. To keep it simple for the client. Right, the oil of Sa'ayit Shemerava b'Mizrach, and the blood of Ida of the bird oil, oil which needed to be squeezed onto the various corners, the kerens, the horns of the mizbeach. Those are the four corners of the mizbeach. When there were so many bird oilers, and so the kahanim were all piled up on the east side, so a kain who came a little late would stay on the left side, and he would go to the left. Says the Gemara, Elu Shayu Meshachrin. But these bowls were made out of plaster, but they became dark. Good that the bowl that had designated for wine became dark. How could water darken up? Okay, water doesn't discolor. Even the Amamah, since it says in our Mishnah, if one poured water into the wine bowl, of wine into the water bowl, Yatsa, it's Yatsa 48 B4. So Mayim also a shukha, it could happen that the, the water bowl could get darkened because sometimes you put Mayim in there. Says the Mishnah Baitu, Minukin can mean Shnei Chutan. And the bowls had spouts with two holes like thin nostrils. One of the holes was thick and one of them was thinner. So they drained that at the same time, which we already said, Yayin and Yayin and Mayim should go together. Says the Gemara, let's say our Mishnah is not like Rabbi Yehuda, is only like Rabbi Yehuda and not like the rabbis. It's not Rabbi Yehuda, I'm a belug, I'm an with only one lug of eight days. In other words, three lugin of wine and one lug of, of water all eight days according to Shmini Atzeris. So now we know that the wine libation was three lugin. It's therefore, there was more wine than water. So therefore, it had to pour out faster in order for them to pour, pour out at the same rate. The Irabon and Kihadi Ninu, they were the same. They were both three Lugan. The Yayin was three Lugan, the wine was three Lugan, and the water was three Lugan. So I would say, why do you need different size holes? Says the Gemara, Filu Temer Rabbonon, Chamro Sumrich Mayet colors. Wine is thick and water is thin. And now we get our saying, blood is thicker than water. There you go. There you go. There you go. The E Rabbi Yehuda said the terms thicker and thinner are inappropriate. Rocha v'kavri is like it should have. Rabbi Yehuda describes these holes as wider and narrower, which is a more marked difference. Wider and narrower it makes more sense when you say one is three, one is three, one is three, three looking, 
and one look, and as opposed to think and consider. The time we learned in a bride, so Rabbi Udoi, Meshnei Kash Vosai saw Yisham. There were two sacred vessels on top of the altar. Echad Shal Mayim, one for the water libation, the Echad Shal Yayim, and one for the wine libation. Shal Yayim Pia Chorachav. The opening of the vessel was for wine was wide. Shal Mayim Pia Kotzed. For water it was narrower. Kiteshem Kolim Bevasag. They pour out at the same time. Shma Mina. That our Mishnah, which uses the lotion thicker and thinner, as opposed to wider and uh, and narrower, is got to be the Rabbana. Give me, wait, 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 wait. Uh, yeah, this is where we're going to stop. Right over here, because now we're going to take. So essentially, we're on today's stop. Today's stop is 49. So, um, what do you call it? And tomorrow's that tomorrow we'll do get today's stop, um, which has a lot of agathas, including what Jerry was pointing out, that wine has more than one property. Everybody have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day.